Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am sharing my October favorites today. So it's November, happy November. I can't believe we're fully in the swing of the holiday season now. Um, I had a really busy month in October. I feel like I tried a lot of new products. I was putting out a lot of content. As you know, the Sephora holiday savings event is ongoing. So I feel like there were a lot of things in rotation, but I really wanted to share a slightly more pared down version of my favorites and things that I was reaching for constantly throughout the month. And I also just celebrated my birthday um, on Saturday. It's Tuesday now, so thanks for the birthday wishes. That was really sweet. And let's just get into it. I'm gonna start with makeup. There are things, like I said, there are things that are here that are in the Sephora holiday savings event, but it's not just Sephora stuff. This is just kind of general things I've been loving, beauty related. So I've got some new things and some older things. One new thing that I tried and I've been loving, I've been wearing nonstop is the Gucci blush in the shade Rosy Beige. This is their new powder blush. And I'm telling you, powder blush is making a comeback in 2023. Not the powder blushes of your, the like powdery, dusty blushes, but I'm talking about elevated, creamy, beautiful, beautiful smooth powders that seem to filter the skin. The ones that give you a very luminous finish without being heavy or tacky or sticky on the skin the way that some cream blushes can be. I love cream blushes, all cream products, don't get me wrong, but I do think there's a place in the world for really sophisticated blush powders, and this is one of those formulas. So the packaging is super weighty, it's gorgeous, I mean, it's Gucci. Um, it feels very heavy and the compact is stunning. The shade Rosy Beige on me is really interesting because it's almost like a neutral mauvey rose. I have heard others say it's a bit peachier on them, but I have a very golden undertone. So when a blush is warm, sometimes it just looks neutral on me or maybe even cool toned. It just really depends on your skin tone and your undertones. But on me, it's a very good like neutral nude blush. So I've been picking it up a ton. It goes kind of with every sort of makeup look that I've done. And yeah, it's been a real standout for me. It gives me a very diffused, blurred, skin-like appearance. And one thing that is confusing about this is it's called the Luminous Matte Blush, I think, or Luminous Satin. And what they mean by that is that the finish on the cheeks is luminous, but it, it doesn't actually have like shimmer or sparkle in it. It's just a very satin sort of finish and it's really beautiful. I'm not wearing it on my cheeks today. I actually just filmed a little try on of the new Make Beauty blushes. So you may see those in next month's favorites. They're really beautiful, I'll just say that. And um, you'll see them in shorts and future videos and on Instagram and all of that. But that's all to say, powder blushes are coming back in a new sophisticated way. If you watched my last Sephora haul try on, um, I tested out the new Dior Khaki Neutrals palette, and this is their limited edition holiday collection. They released two backstage eyeshadow palettes, one in Khaki Neutrals and one that's more of like a cranberry shade. And this is just so beautiful. It's colorful without being so bold. There's something very wearable and soft and earthy about this. And I think that's why it's been going in and out of stock during the Sephora sale, so keep an eye out for that. Um, yeah, I just think all of the shades wear beautifully. It's not your uber bold, uber pigmented, colorful eyeshadows, but I think that's what's nice about it is it gives you that like Dior quality, but a slightly more wearable experience with this green color story. I did do three different looks with this palette in that video, so I'll link it below in the description box. I have a couple of other eyeshadow things, and you know, I think going into fall and winter, I'm more prone to do a smoky look or I'm just a little bit heavier with the eye makeup than I am in the summer. In the summer, I might go for like a fun colorful look, but generally I just like a sheer wash of color or just like one and done eyeshadows. Um, and in the winter, 
I, I go for a little bit more depth and smokiness. And I do have a single eyeshadow that I think is just perfection. I can't stop wearing it. So I um, did a try on of the new Half Magic Beauty eyeshadows. And these are eyeshadow singles that you can purchase separately and you can also purchase their eyeshadow palette. The metallic shades are definitely the standouts to me. Um, I mean, they're all beautiful, but the metallics like feel like cream eyeshadows. So Wet Pebble is the one that I've worn the most, and this one is the one that I tested in that video. But I've also been loving the one next to it, which is called Glamorest, which is like a coppery, rosy, um, rusty sort of shade. So let me swatch these for you real quick. They honestly feel wet in the pan. They're very emollient. They have some serious, like, creamy binders in the formula. You can even see on my finger how glistening and wet they look. So this is Wet Pebble, and this is Glamorest, and I think you can see in those swatches just how creamy and stretchy and wet looking that formula is. So Wet Pebble is interesting because it has like a warm brown base, but it has a taupey silver shift. It even has little tiny, 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 like micro twinkly pieces in it. I wouldn't even say it's glittery. It's just kind of twinkly. And then Glamorest has this beautiful red-based base, and then it has a similar wet sheen running through it. It doesn't have quite as high of a contrast of the base and the topper that Wet Pebble does, but these are both beautiful one and done shades. I've been reaching for Wet Pebble the most, but Glamorest is also a beautiful one and done shade. And they both look so dimensional when you blend them out over the eye and you blend out the edges. It's really just all you need for a very complex looking eye look because especially with Wet Pebble, when you blend it out, you see the warm base kind of sheer out and that contrast between the warm base and the twinkly silvery shift across the eye is just stunning. So these are for sure the standouts to me um, in that eyeshadow release, but they again are all really beautiful formulas. Then I pulled something out for my Sephora shopping guide that I hadn't used in a few months and now I've been using it nonstop. And that's why I like doing those videos. I like shopping my stash, but this is the Tom Ford Creme Eyeshadow Quad in the Color Story Tiger Eye. And these are all creme to powder formulas. So they feel creamy, but then they blend out and set to a powdery finish. And it's a great way of trying cream eyeshadows if you have oily eyelids that don't tolerate a straight up cream really well. And the formula is just so smooth and buttery. I'm actually wearing this bronze shade all over the eye. It's just a one and done eyeshadow today. It's just very easy to wear, but all of these shades are beautiful one and done shadows. They look super smooth and flattering across all different eye shapes, all different eye types. So let me swatch these for you. This, these are not as pigmented, but they're extremely smooth and satiny. Like it feels like satin, the fabric, <laughs> when you swatch them across the skin. So these are not my best eyeshadow swatches, but I have swatched these before. I'll link that um, below. And I think this quad is for someone who wants an elevated chic look, but doesn't want to put a lot of work or effort into blending or constructing an eye look. Maybe you're more of a minimalist, but you like luxury beauty. I think this is perfect. And I actually noticed that Sephora has a gift set this year that is $95, so that's about the cost of this palette with a lipstick in it. So essentially you're getting like a free lipstick for the price of the eyeshadow palette. So I'll link that below as well if you're curious. As you guys know, I'm on a Danessa Myricks kick. I have been loving my Lightwork 4 palette. I think it's the best palette of 2022, but I've also tried recently some base products of hers that are not new, but they're new to me and I haven't been able to put them down. This will be no surprise if you've been up to date on my videos. The first one is the Blurring 
Balm Powder in the shade Universal. This is just the clear version. And I've loved this as a primer. So this makes my makeup last longer. It smooths over the appearance of pores and it's also a great eyeshadow primer. It just kind of does it all for me. And I think that's why I've been reaching for it so much is I usually, if I'm going to wear a primer, I have a primer and then an eyeshadow primer. But this is all in one. I just kind of take a thin layer all over my face. And I actually find it works best when you apply a very, very sheer layer over the skin. So I scoop some out with a little spoon that comes on the lid. I melt it down on the back of my hand. And then I like to take a paddle brush. This is just an It Cosmetics like flat paddle brush. And I like to brush on a really, really smooth, thin layer across the skin. And that makes sure that I don't get any cakiness, that it's evenly distributed across the skin. And I find that that gives me the best appearance over time. I've also been loving the Balm Contour in the shade Medium One. I also demoed this recently, but this shade is so good for me. It's like a very, very neutral golden tan so it's not too red it's not too warm it doesn't look like bronzer it's not orange but it just has the right shade for my skin tone especially as someone with a golden undertone i can't go for a contour that's too ashy so of course leave it to danessa myricks to create a really beautiful range of contour shades and the texture is really nice too it's a balm but it's very thin so it's not oily it's not emollient it just is a very, very light layer. It blends out like a dream. I just, I can't stop using it. Lastly, I have my Smith Cosmetics brushes. This is the 131. This has been great for cream blush, cream contour, cream bronzer. Um, it's great for buffing products in. You could even use this for foundation if you wanted or concealer. It's just the perfect like multitasking brush and I could have like 10 of these and just do my makeup with this only. It would be perfect. The other brush I've been loving is the Smith 103. This is a fluffy paddle brush. So it's small, but it's thin, and this has been beautiful for blending out concealer. It's also great for powder. You can um, sort of spot powder as you need with a more targeted application. And honestly, that's what I love about both of these brushes. They're small. So I like to have smaller brushes on hand for a more targeted application where I want it. And these are both, uh, blended, so they're natural and synthetic fibers. This one's a little bit stiffer and rougher. This one's a little bit softer, but they are both like beautiful at creating super diffused, well blended makeup. And I get, I get it now. I get the hype with Smith Cosmetics brushes. I only have two skincare products this month. I've been pretty consistent with my other favorites, but one new thing that I've brought into my rotation is the Holy Frog Owl Multi-Peptide Eye Cream. So this is a peptide-based eye cream. Peptides are great for anti-aging, for strengthening the skin. This is a really beautiful, rich, but not too greasy eye cream. So it's unscented, it's great for all skin types, and this is what it looks like. Here's the texture of the eye cream. It feels almost balmy, like it melts down once you start to blend it into the skin, but it's not too greasy, it's not too heavy, it hasn't caused milia or anything like that, but I do feel like I'm getting almost like an eye, overnight eye mask sort of treatment with this texture. So it's been really, really comforting and soothing around the eyes. The other new thing I've introduced is the Naturium Multi-Peptide Moisturizer, and this um, also contains multi-peptides, encapsulated vitamin C, and panthenol. I use a separate vitamin C personally, so I'm just using this for the moisturizing elements, but panthenol is nice for calming. Peptides, as I mentioned, are great for rounding out like an anti-aging skincare routine. And of course, you know me, I love a pump with a tube. So this is Naturium, it's very affordable, and this is such a nice texture for daytime or honestly, even nighttime. It has that ability to be both lightweight and moisturizing at the same time. So this is what the texture looks like. And it's very creamy and it sinks in quickly. There's no fragrance. This is just the kind of moisturizer that anyone can use. 
from oily to dry, I think. If you're really, really dry, you may want to supplement with other more emollient or hydrating ingredients. But for me, this is a perfect daytime moisturizer. I've been wearing it under makeup and it plays beautifully under makeup. There's no pilling or anything like that. It's just a great all-rounder and I love the price point of Naturium and they're at Target. For fragrance, I just did a huge fall fragrance edit with all of my favorite perfumes and candles, so I'll link that below, but there are a few standouts from that edit that I've been wearing a ton. So I mentioned um, Ellis Brooklyn's A Prey, and Sandra, TT Sandra here on YouTube, she always calls this a sexy lumberjack perfume, and I it makes me laugh because I do agree, but to me it's more sexy than lumberjack. Like. I'm wearing it right now. There's obviously a woods note to it. There's even a bit of like smokiness, but like an expensive smokiness, like an expensive fireplace, but it has this creamy quality and even a little bit of sweetness that comes from like this sweet bourbon note. So it's supposed to evoke like sipping on a nice cocktail, like in the ski lounge in the mountains. So it has that um, sweet gourmand quality to it, but it's as much woods as it is gourmand, or maybe even like 60% woods, 40% gourmand. But yeah, it's just been a favorite. It's definitely a winter scent, and I'm so excited that it's seasonally appropriate to wear again. My other favorite has been Dead Cool Taunt, and I just have a mini of this. I actually shattered my <laughs> full-size Taunt bottle. It was tragic, but thank God I have this. So Taunt is a very um, wearable scent, and I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean that in the sense that I think a lot of people will love it because it's daytime appropriate, but you can also mix it with other things. It's a great layering perfume. You guys know I love Dead Cool Milk. Taunt is a little bit creamier, so it has a vanilla base, but it's balanced by woods, so it's not a super, super sweet vanilla. It has like a slight musk and it wears close to the skin and I love it. I just think it's um, it's a crowd pleaser, you know? So Dead Cool is at Sephora, which is super exciting. This is like the first time they've been included in a Sephora savings event. So I know I've gotten a lot of questions about them. If you're curious about the brand, my two favorites are for sure Taunt as well as Milk. Last month I mentioned by Rado De Los Santos. It's also in that fragrance edit. I can't stop wearing this. This is my new everyday fragrance. I mentioned that it's it has the Palo Santo note, but there's also this clean quality to it, almost like a mintiness with a muskiness. There's some mystery to it. This is my new signature fragrance for sure. It has a very clean, fresh quality. I just, I can't describe it. You have to smell it in person. It's so good. And I've been burning Hinoki Phantom because it's finally below 70 degrees in, in LA. And um, that's for us cold enough for me to burn my sexy fireplace candles. So Hinoki Phantom is one of those. It has resin, Hinoki, cardamom, jasmine, moss, and guyac wood. Um, I would also say this is in line with Nest Hearth. If you like any of those expensive fireplace scents, this is one of them, but it's like a sexy fireplace scent. The last item is one I mentioned in my last empties video as one I'm using now. Um, it's the Soft Services Buffing Bar. So I mentioned that this is my current favorite body exfoliant and it's a bar of soap with gritty crystals in it and they do degrade. They are very, very fine. So it's not like a harsh exfoliant, but what I love is that the bar of soap itself is a very stiff and firm bar of soap. So it doesn't um, get too soft and start to melt down in the shower. I do keep it in its own little case so that it dries out between showers, but it just gives me the perfect um, amount of exfoliation as well as great control because unlike an exfoliant that's like a gel, it doesn't just slide around and like slip off and like wash off my body. I'm able to control where and how much and how intensely I'm exfoliating. But Soft Services came out with a limited edition buffing bar that's called New Spice and it smells just like apple cider. It's so good. All of their body products are typically unscented, which is why I love them. But this limited edition version is really fun. 
and I haven't opened it yet. I just wanted to show you this and not my one that I'm using right now because it's gross. But um, yeah, I it just smells like Martinelli's apple cider. So I'm very, very excited about this um, scent release. So I think that's it for me today. It's kind of short and sweet for me, I know, but I really have put out so many huge shopping guides and fragrance edits and empties that I wanted to put together a bit more of a tightly curated favorites video. So I would love to hear what you've been enjoying, um, what you loved in October, what you're excited about in November. I know we are going heavily into sales season. So I always like to say that it's never worth going into debt for beauty products or any products for that matter. Your financial health comes first, your mental health comes first. I'm happy that I'm able to share things that I think are worthy purchases, in my opinion, but that's always a subjective term, you know, like what's worth it to you. So I just hope that you're all staying centered and anxiety free going into the holiday season and honestly just the highest commercial season of the year. I know that puts a lot of stress on us in different ways, financial, social, emotional, mental. So I just hope you're taking good care of yourselves. And I hope that this can be a place um, where we can think holistically about beauty and indulge in our joys, but also think about that in the bigger context of our lives. So take care this month and I'll see you soon. Bye.